Well, welcome everybody. I hope you can all see that. Let's put that on there. There we go. So we, my name is uh, Rachel Calandro and I am the acting head of uh, Billingbrook Sixth Form. Uh, and as you can see, this is the front of our lovely uh, Sixth Form Centre, which um, holds approximately um, 30 students. So we take students from the age of 16 through to the age of sometimes 19, but mostly 16 to 18. Um, so it's, it's your sixth form, key stage five uh, phase that we're looking at. So, uh, and as Sarah was just saying uh, with Moulton College, often we are the link that would then lead to that college placement or that apprenticeship placement. And part of our job is preparing young adults for the next phase of their life. So I'm just gonna take you through a little bit about what we do. Um, our main teaching and learning focus is that preparation for students for their adulthood and there's a, a little image here and of the focus areas that we actually focus on. So we're looking at the four areas of preparation for adulthood, which includes focusing on good health and those young people having an understanding of what it means to be healthy and have healthy lifestyles. Um, the involvement of being independent so that they're learning those skills. Uh, where they can, whatever level they're working at, they can increase their level of independence and self-advocacy, um, looking at how they can be involved with friends, understanding of relationships and their place in the community. And of course, as has been mentioned, careers and employment is a really big issue. So um, obviously, as I've just mentioned, most, a lot of people have different levels of um, uh, achievement of where they're going to get so this requires a very personalized approach for each life journey and therefore we look at it as a very bespoke uh, personalized way of preparing those students for the next phase many have different interests different talents they also have different needs and challenges so we we use those two years in sit form to see well enable our students to explore what it is that they're likely to be interested in so that they can make a choice that is their choice and one that's going to fulfill their life to the best of their ability. So here at Billingbrook, we have several pathways. Like I said, it's very personalised. Um, we have our preparation for life, because not all students that come to us will necessarily be um, looking at careers and employment. Not all of them will, but they will need a full and enriched life. So we need to prepare them for that life and give them all the opportunities that that life um, will open up to them. We also need to explore preparation for adulthood, so beyond 18 and into adulthood, making those decisions for themselves and what that means, and also preparation for employment. So we have those different pathways and our curriculum looks to serve each of those pathways to the best of our ability. So we're going to focus first of all on preparation for life uh, and we look at the ASDAN life skills um, form for that. So if we just have a little look. These life skills um, challenges are separated into 12 subject areas. So we're still looking at a very broad and balanced curriculum, um, exploring citizenship, giving opportunities for DT, design and technology. English is a core subject and feeds through everything that we do. We also, we also want our young people to be expressive, understanding of the wider world, uh, history, We'd love to explore language, but our own language as well as foreign languages, maths, PE, PSHE, that's personal, social and health education, relationships and sex education, as well as science. So it's very, very cross-curricular and a lot of our work covers many of these areas. Within the Life Skills Challenge, we also have vocational areas. So we're looking at those areas of interest as we look to adulthood, that our young people might be interested in. Are they interested in computing, hair and beauty, construction, land-based activities? If they are looking to go to college, if they've got any of these interests, that might guide them and point them in the direction that they want to go. So they're discovering new talents, which they may not have yet explored. So this is what we're trying to explore in sixth form as much as possible. So if I give you an example of what a life life skills challenge might be. They start at very different levels of ability. We're looking at working towards entry level, where, for example, if we're looking at money, learners might, we need to be able to recognize and order coins by value and indicating where money might be used. 
But this life skills challenge can also be set at entry level where they can recognize and order the notes by value. Entry level two, they're able to do more transactions and carry out appropriate calculations. Entry level three, where those money transactions are looking at much bigger amounts of money where they're understanding how they might use that money in their wider life. Obviously, each challenge involves small steps of success and it's set at the right level for each student. Again, we are preparing in small steps those opportunities for what life might present in adulthood. And these life skills challenges are set specifically at the needs of those young people. Obviously, like I said, it's not just maths, but that's just an example because that's a key life skill. So moving out of as Dan and looking more at preparation for adulthood and employment, those pathways, we look through uh, Prince's Trust and the Achieve programme. Now, this programme is completely flexible and like it says here, enables us to deliver a curriculum that supports the students in their preparation for life, adulthood and employment. So it's looking a little bit more at those employability skills. And at the end of this, we're hoping that they will have achieved the personal development and employability qualification. Now they can get that as at entry level three, it starts at entry level three and it extends all the way up to level two. So we've, we've got those options for, for students who have a skill or an area where they really excel at to achieve at a high level. Um, even if there are other areas where they still need that additional support. So it gives us that much fuller idea. So here we've got the, the curriculum essentially overview for Prince's Trust and they focus very much on six core modules. So they're looking at the skills for school, personal social development, life skills, active citizenship, so being in the community, enterprise, so that's the world of work, but also how one might work for oneself as well, so setting up business and enterprise and preparing for the work, the wider world of work for other people. So underpinning all of this, we have literacy and numeracy as well as our use of language. So as you can see, it's very, very uh, comprehensive. We're exploring preparation for life, adult, adulthood and employment for all of our students, enabling them to see, well, what is, what is it in it for them? Obviously, we want to enrich life as well. So here we do Arts Award, where students get to explore different skills and talents that they might want to investigate. We've got, they can learn little dances, they can learn to play an instrument, paint pictures, um, but it's very much about what they want to do. So it's a personalized approach to the exploration of the arts. And it's enabling our students, students to find uh, a passion that they might have yet not actually discovered. Further enrichment, we do the Duke of Edinburgh Award and we have amazing success with our students developing different skills, getting out and about, reading maps and exploring the world firsthand rather than from the other end of the computer. So that's, that, that's we're very keen to get our, out there and get our hands dirty. So what does a personalised timetable involve? Of course, Active life English, active life maths. This underpins everything that we do, but we explore personal care, enterprise and employability skills, hair and beauty, shopping, money management, uh, and to name so much more. I'm going to flick through all of these because you can read what these are all saying. So we, we've set up our own flat, so we've got students that can learn how to run a, a washing machine, make a bed, hoover a floor, those sorts of things as well as uh, all those other things. I'm going to focus now on catering because that's one of our real in areas of interest. Um, we have until recently had a, a cafe that was open to the public. Um, but we've decided that one of the things that we really wanted to do was get our students to be a little bit more hands on. Uh, and our, and our um, clientele wasn't always guaranteed we could have been quite quiet and that meant that our students weren't always as busy as we'd, as we'd have liked. So what we've done is we've changed it so that our students are our clientele. They make their school dinners for each, each of the students. So the students who have opted to, for food and catering, they take it in turns to cook the school dinners. They have to research, plan and evaluate the menus. They're involved in purchasing and budgeting and of course preparing the food and here we've got some of our students that 
they make some absolutely stunning dinners. And if they're going off to college to do anything like catering, like in some of the other colleges, as mentioned by Sarah earlier in Northampton, then these are the sorts of skills that is going to prepare them for that next step of their education. Here we have students that are working out the budgets and you can see that they're, they're using their math skills in a very practical sense. We have students that are out in the garden doing practical projects. They decide on the projects and they're involved in it uh, and we're developing our outdoor space all the time. We have students that have to build in sheds and that dreaded flat pack um, and students that are working really hard on the ground. But again, it's their choice. They're, they're deciding what it is they need to work on as well as the class-based work that we're doing. We have young people working on childcare um, and um, they, they all love it a lot. So what I'm gonna just focus on here is some of the feedback that we've had from the students in the last couple of weeks. Uh, these, are, these are comments that are directly from the students that sixth forms feel, sixth formers feel that they're allowed to express themselves. They appreciate the staff. They like being able to do the gardening, cooking and the, eating the food that they cook, they really enjoy. They are always busy, they are never idle and never, never do they get bored. They're really appreciating that difference of coming up to sick form and being treated a lot more like adults uh, and the activities that we do, they seem to be having a great time doing. So I would really recommend uh, if you've got a, a year 11 young person and they're interested in um, all of those things or any of those things or want to explore, then Billingbrook sick form would be an exceptionally good option for you. We do have engagement with employers. Here, here you can see we've, we've been working with Workbridge as well. Billing Appledrome, we had some um, supported interns working there last year and they had a fantastic successful year. And we've been working with other externals as well. But it's all about preparing our students for those next steps and um, we have a, a great time and a, a really rich uh, and wonderful time working with those students. If you've got any questions, I'm, I'm open to any questions now. Thank you.